We're gonna get philosophical. See what I did there? Cause we're gonna be talking about uh, Phil Collins. Anyways, so Phil Collins gets a lot of hate. I mean, if you haven't noticed, you've been living under a rock. He gets a lot of hate for ruining Genesis and making them sell out, taking over the band because he hates Prague, and that he thought he was a better vocalist than Peter Gabriel. All of which are completely false. First of all, we've already cleared up that Phil Collins never wanted to even get away from the drum set. The whole, whole idea of coming out from behind the drum kit appalled me, really. Also, a lot of people say that right when Peter Gabriel left, he took over the band. Not really. If anything, during their dark period of uncertainty, it's actually Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford that took charge of the band. Um, and uh, I think at this stage, you know, with Mike and I sort of perhaps being dominant, certainly on Trick or Tell, and we probably were on Wind of Wuthering as well, I think. And then also Phil Collins is accused of wanting to make them sell out. He wanted to go pop. He hated Prague. First of all, let's look at these interviews and see how Phil Collins was actually the one that was bringing a lot of the odd time signatures and progressive writing, especially with stuff like Dance the Moonlit Night. So let me dance with the Moonlit Night. I was starting to listen to Mavish New Orchestra, so I was trying to put my weirdness, my weird time signatures and into anything that would move, you know, anything that would allow me. So Dancing with the Moon at Night was, I think, probably some of the instrumental stuff was me and Steve there. Seems funny to say it now, but, I, you know, I was still going to see Yes every Wednesday at the Marquee and still trying to bring a little bit of that musicianship into the band that they kind of the tricky arrangements that they used to have. And I've noticed in a lot of these interviews that Phil will mostly talk positively about anything that they put out and he still thinks that they were cool for what they were he only ever talks shit about the prog era when it came to stuff that he thought was a little bit annoying like too many lyrics in a song that crammed it which i mean is understandable you know what i mean but then tony banks and mike rutherford god damn i swear if anyone in the band is gonna get shit for making them go in this pop direction. It should be Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford. Look at the way that they talk about the early stuff. The rhythm's great. I think the words are a bit suspect. They're kind of okay. Tony and I wrote them. But looking back, it's a little too busy. And this, this song suffered a bit from having just too many good ideas in it. And there's Dance with Moon at Night, which I, I'm, you know, I like. I like the way it starts very much, but it's, again, it's not, not my favorite song. Although it's a lot of, I know a lot of people like it very much, but I, I it's a slightly weaker track for me. It, it's got some nice stuff and some okay stuff, I think, at Nursery Crime. First part of the song was great. I think the Moon at Night bit was, was okay, a bit busy. Again, I think the song is a bit more complicated than it needs to be. I think there's a couple of little extra bits in the middle there that should probably, courtesy of me, in fact, I think, which probably be better off if they weren't there. Yeah, I mean, the good, bit, the good bits are good. Shit, he's singing all over my bit. I think the good bits are good and the bad bits are a bit... A bit dodgy but I think there's some, there's some strong bits there definitely. And if you watch the interviews talking about their pop albums you notice that they never really talk shit about anything even the horrible songs like Who Done It. If you know anything about the band if you've done any research watched any interviews you can tell the head honchos and leaders of the band will always be the two guys that still remain from the very start Mike Rutherford and Tony Banks. Phil Collins never was the leader of the band he just ended up singing for them but for some reason, people still think that, oh, because Phil Collins had a hit album and everyone really recognized him, that all of a sudden Genesis became his backing band. No, it was still Mike and Tony's band. The first bunch of albums that came out with Phil on vocals were still very much prog. For the first bunch of albums with Phil on vocals, it's Tony and Mike writing the music and Phil maybe writing some vocals or some odd rhythms. And then it became all three of them would write together, so it's not Phil dominating everything, you fucking idiots. Here's what Phil has to say about these rumors. I have to say that there's been a, you know, sort of little rumors on and off throughout the years that because of my apparent, you know, unhappiness at Pete's visuals, um, that I was either an instigator of him leaving, pleased that he left so I could sing, you know. I, none of that is true, you know. I love Peter to this day as if he, you know, we've always been close. I played on his album, I played for him as his drummer for free because he couldn't afford a band at one point, you know, I, I, I 
he did gigs when he was routining the third album. I love the guy, you know, I mean, went to his wedding and you came to mine. I mean, we, we all get on great, but I've always felt very, very close to Pete. And I was very sad when he left, but we had to get on with it. And I didn't want to be the singer at all, because I was a drummer. And by that point, I was a very good drummer. So wh why would I want to sing? We couldn't find anybody else. So if we couldn't find anybody else, that was the end of it. Or have someone that didn't really make the grade, you know. So bit by bit, I ended up doing the singing. And, um, but I, you know, people always go take the short story. You know, they take the shortest route and they think, Phil's the singer. He's had to go at Pete. He wanted him out. Well, don't believe Phil. How about Peter fucking Gabriel himself? It's bullshit. Uh, Phil, yeah, some people think, yeah, that he was, Phil was, um, sort of chomping at the bit, uh, waiting to get rid of me. And it wasn't like that at all. I think he loved being a drummer and although I think was beginning to write songs and enjoy being a singer, uh, for quite some time the band didn't consider him as the singer and I don't think he really considered himself as, as, the, as the singer for Genesis. Um, so uh, that evolved slowly. It was clear to me that he could have a big career on his own. Uh, and I remember you know, saying that to him and to, um, to the rest of the band uh, at the time. And because, as I said, we would often be there um, hammering out our own things, which were sounding quite different from what the band was doing. I'd, I'd ne I never had the feeling that uh, uh, the band wanted to get rid of me at any time. And, and I think, because we started the tour for the Lamb, and that you know got great reactions, um, people were hoping that you know things would all heal, and then um, we got to the Midwest of America, and and it just got too much for me, and I just knew that I was drowning and had to uh, head up for air. I hope this puts these stupid rumors and conspiracies that Phil destroyed Genesis to rest. Nobody talks shit about my crystal ball and gets away with it.